Hello again everybody, this is Mr. Everything. I'm coming at you with another Wargaming in Miniature video. In this video, we're going to continue on with our Princeton project, and I'm going to show you how I'm painting the American War of Independence buildings. I've got some I've got some Sarissa Precision MDF buildings. I also have a Renedra plastic building, and I'm going to paint these for my Princeton project. Okay, the first thing I want to do is say okay. that all I did was I sprayed this with nutmeg satin, right? It's a very light brown, and what it is, and I sprayed the entire thing with it, okay? Inside a spray block, but everything else sprayed brown, and I let that dry. <clears throat> these have not been, no paint has touched these guys. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is paint the chimney and the bricks. And I'm using Boulder and Black Cherry. Okay, we got Boulder, which is kind of a brown gray looking color. And if you notice, I didn't really bother watering it down or stirring it or anything like that. And I'm using a pretty soft bristle brush. It's like probably a size four. And I'm just coating the entire chimney with it. Whoop, we don't need the roof. And you can see it's kind of getting down into all the cracks, darkening, uh, taking that dark look away. That's fine. And then we go around the bottom edge. As you can see along the bottom edge of this building, these are there is brickwork. Now it's not truly bricks; they're more like stones, and that's why I'm using the color Boulder. And it's okay to make a little bit of mistake. Don't make too many, but a little is okay. Okay. And we're going to let that dry. Oh, hold on. Remember, the MDF is going to absorb or soak in the paint. It's going to actually soak into the wood. So we're going to let that set off to the side just for a second and let that soak. We're going to do the same thing with this house. Exact same thing. Applying the base coat of boulder. Or a light gray, any light gray would work. But this is kind of, it looks like it has a very little bit of brown. I mean, it's, it's more gray than it is brown. Rocks aren't brown, they're not gray, they're kind of a mix. All right, there we go along the bottom edge. That might have been a little bit too thick, but that's okay. Because it's going to get absorbed. Just follow the foundation all the way around. Keep on keeping on. And again, like I said, you can go over a little bit, but try not to. Because when this paint absorbs, it'll kind of disappear a little bit. So just try to stay off the vertical wood slats. Okay. Now I'm jumping off the porch and just doing the back side of this chimney here. knowing that there's, from the door to the wall, there is a foundation stones. Harder, harder ones to get to because of the railing. Okay. 
This side of the door is super easy. Okay. Now we're going to let that foundation dry just a little bit. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to spray the top of this roof one of these colors and I'm going to spray the top of this roof a different color. I'm actually going to spray one of them the spruce green. It's a it's a light green. I'm deliberately going with light colors and not like dark camouflage colors. It's going to be a, one of them is going to be a light green. These roofs are actually identical. And then the second one I'm actually going to spray with a gray. It's actually going to be a primer gray. All right, so let me go spray those and then I'll be right back. All right, so now while we're waiting for that those those roofs to dry, I wanted to spray this also with the spruce green, but uh, I don't want to get the green on everything else. So I use this 3M painter's tape, this edge block. To tuck under the roof here and stick it to the walls. Same thing on the other side. I'm going to kind of try to tuck it under the walls. Stick it against the wood so that when I spray, it'll only hit that. Now, I also don't want to spray the sides. So, I tuck it. And I can kind of angle it up if I wanted to ensure there's a little tape in places I don't want sprayed. basically making a barrier so that the spray won't get on anything other than what I want it to get on. I've used this technique quite a bit, especially like when I paint like model airplanes and things like that. I'll tape off certain areas so that when I paint like nose art or spray uh, camouflage colors, I'll use especially like the German like World War II camouflage colors. I tend to tape things off and then spray. And you can do that with an airbrush as well. I just use I just use can spray though. And all I'm really spraying is this and this. Okay. So I'm going to try to avoid hitting the chimney. There we go. All right. So let me go out and spray this the spruce as well, and then I'll be right back. All right, now on the church, I'm gonna use that black cherry that I was talking about. We're gonna paint that on the window shutters and the doors, the front and the back door. Don't need a whole lot. 
This model doesn't have a whole lot on it. So we're going to paint the door. The window sills, or the window shutters actually. Cherry looks a lot like old Citadel corn red, or yeah, the not blood red because that's a lot brighter. This is more of a darker red, it's not as dark as black red. Okay, now while this is drying, I thought of this. I forgot the steps here need to be that brown, that boulder color, the gray, the gray boulder color. And I'm not trying to be subtle with it. I'm not trying to highlight because I'm, what I'm going to do is we're going to we're going to do a wash polyurethane step, and that's going to. That's going to wash everything. And it's going to darken everything. Okay, so we got our boulder, got a red door. I thought about painting this, but I'm not going to. I'm going to leave it the primary wood color. Okay, so we're going to let that dry. We're going to let the paint outside the, the, the ceilings dry before we move on to the next step. Okay, this is the gray primed roof. As you can see, uh, it's starting to be absorbed into the MDF, but that's okay because we've got another step on top of this. And you can see that the stonework, it's starting to be absorbed into the MDF. That's okay, I just wanted it to be a slightly different color when I went to the final step. Okay, after peeling the painter's tape off, you can see how the green is on the tiles only and not all over the rest of the model. And then what I'm also gonna do is I'm gonna take this back outside and we're going to let this continue to dry because you can see that this is still quite wet and uh, it's filling this room with fumes. So let's go ahead and take this outside and let it dry. All right, now once everything dries, I'm going to go over these models with two colors. I'm going to go, I'm going to use American Chestnut, which is kind of a reddish brown. And then I'm going to go over uh, with Antique Walnut, which is a... Uh, a little bit lighter brown but it's still really dark brown I'm gonna completely coat the entire model that includes the that includes the body the frame of the house but it also includes the roof the roof is gonna have a one or the other and then the other house is gonna have the opposite so I'm gonna kinda mix it up a little bit so that all the houses don't look exactly the same. And then uh, same with this, I'm just gonna use the uh, American chestnut over the entire model. And so what we're gonna do is as soon as everything is dry, which they're not, but as soon as everything's dry, we'll go ahead and resume this step. And I'll see you in just a couple of minutes. All right, now before you start doing any work using the polyurethane be sure to make sure you put down some wax paper um, how much do I need that should be about enough you know the reason why you put the wax paper down is so that 
when you put the polyurethane on, if it drips off, you don't want it sticking to your board or your table or making any kind of mess at all. And also be prepared to be able to clean your brush. You're going to need something like either mineral spirits or or acetone that's what i tend to use when i clean my brushes uh, because this is an oil base now i'm going to actually use a one inch house brush to paint these houses this entire building is going to be painted with the american chestnut and then i'm going to alternate back and forth uh, with the antique walnut and the american chestnut on these roofs here Let's go ahead and get this walnut out. You can see how dark that is. All right. And don't be afraid to put it on heavy. Now this house brush is a very soft bristled brush so it won't scratch or do anything heinous to your models. Let's get inside the clock tower there. Or no, I guess it's not a clock tower, I guess it's a I guess it's a, what do you call it, bell tower. And it seems like it's very runny and li liquidy. Well, that's the way it is. It is very runny and liquidy. And you want to apply it fairly, fairly heavily. And what it'll do is it will run down off of the model onto your wax paper. Uh, so be careful about that. Okay. Now I'm coating the sides. But I'm also trying to do kind of a thin coat, and I don't want it to run down so much that it puddles or pools up. You know what I mean? Like, you can see how it's puddling. I don't want it to do that. Okay, we don't have any of the front done. Here, let me just hold the front while I do the back. See how it darkens everything up, but it also brings out all the details. Did I cover the entire back? I did. And by putting this chestnut wash over the red, it actually makes it look even darker and less actually red. All right? And even on your bricks, it brings out all the brick, the gaps between the bricks. Just like any other 
wash that you would do on a on a model. Now, why I use polyurethane wash is because it'll actually harden up and become a protective coat. I'm also going to do that on the roof of this model. Ooh, I lost my grip. Okay, holding on to that. We're doing the same thing over the gray. Um, I knew it wasn't going to stay gray. I didn't expect it to stay gray. I knew it was going to turn into a brown. Uh, that's kind of the way I wanted it to be. I wanted the roof to be a brown, but I just wanted to have the gray underneath as a primary coat. And same thing with the the other buildings and everything. Okay. And I gotta make sure I get it on the sides. Don't really need to put it on this piece here. It's not important or the other one because when you have those on the buildings they're tucked underneath I'm just making sure that the roof gets coated clean the brush off a little bit don't need this super heavy coat I'm trying to thin it out a little bit And luckily when these laser, this wood was laser cut, it has, you can see the shingles and how the polyurethane settles down into the shingles, bringing out every little cut. Now that roof is going to go on this building. Okay, so that roof is going to be the chestnut where that building is going to be the walnut. So on this one, the building is going to be chestnut and the roof is going to be walnut. Okay, we're going to alternate it a little bit. So So I'm going to have to hold it by the roof hopefully and you see we're just gonna coat everything except the roof I can get some on the roof it's okay because both of these are brown and <laughs> when I when I thought about doing this earlier today I was like it's funny I'm using a wood stain on MDF which is wood <laughs> I'm using it I'm using it for what it's supposed to be used for. You're supposed to put it on wood. Yeah, it was Now it's going to now the MDF is going to soak it up. But if you notice, it's bringing out all the details of your brick that we already painted earlier. Okay. And I'm going to do that also on the chimney. It's okay. It'll still be a, a different color because of the undercoat. The only thing I'm going to struggle with probably is getting it underneath the porch. It's going to harden up the wood. It's also going to protect it. Uh, and it's going to give it a deeper, richer, darker color. Oh, I actually, actually can get in there. And don't, don't forget the wood floor of the of the porch, not just the walls. All right, now once you get that body set up, you need to set that off to the side. Now this body and this roof, which these don't go together, are not going to be this color. They're going to be the antique walnut. So let's go ahead and get this, put this away, and start with that. And that's going to go on this roof and these roofs but also 
this body. So we're going to do this body first. <clears throat> Okay, and we're just going to apply it as fairly thick at first, but then we're going to use the brush to move it around so it doesn't puddle or pool up. And it is, of course, uh, this wood is absorbing it, so it's kind of like being soaked in to the wood. And it's okay to drip or drop some drips because we've got our wax paper done. Set that off to the side. Let's get that in a little bit, just in case it starts dripping. Okay, now I'm going to start this top, this roof. Ah, oh, here we go. Yeah. Yeah, that American chestnut and the antique walnut, or the antique, I don't even know what my colors yeah, are. The American chestnut and the antique walnut are almost identical on the colors. How dark brown it is and yeah. Which one has what color of brown? It's just that I've noticed that the Verithane is a lot thicker. And the last thing to do is just the top green on this building and I got to do it without messing anything up. So, hold it in place. It was just the top, that's really all I'm doing. Oh yeah, that looked pretty easy. Yeah, that's too much. These bad boys are covered in their polyurethane. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna let this dry overnight. I'm gonna come back tomorrow and we'll put the finishing touches on these guys. And so you'll see me in just a couple of minutes or seconds. All right, we're back and it's the next day. It's dried. Now you can look at the church and you can see how it's kind of glossy and shiny uh, it's way too glossy and shiny uh, but you can see all the dark lines in the in the um, between the shingles as well as the wood slats I mean look at that and you can see the door looks awesome uh, the dark got inside of all of that up inside there okay so but what we're gonna do and and this is a plastic model so it didn't absorb into the wood where these are actually wooden models and so the polyurethane stain soaks into the wood so it's already kind of a dull finish but what we're gonna do is we're gonna spray it anyway we're gonna spray all five of these pieces with the Krylon Flat Crystal Clear. This is my go-to flat dull coat. And so we're going to do this. And then uh, I'll be back in in just a minute. All right, guys. The uh, flat Krylon Flat is dry. And so I wanted to show you a couple of these models after the fact. Okay, now take a look at that church. 
Okay, and we got this up close so you can kind of see what's going on. That looks good. And with the red, and you can really, really brought out the tiles and the wood slats, you know, darkened up the wood, you know, from the original color. And then the stonework looks great. The doors look great. Um, and I didn't even realize there was another window right there. <laughs> Built this whole model and painted it and everything, and I'm like, where'd this come from? I don't even remember it. All right, so that looks really good. All right, so now let's take a look at this wooden model right here, right? <clears throat> Put that on there. You got the different color chimney, which stands out, and then the, the window sills have been deepened. They've been darkened, and this is all like a darker wood now. Uh, I'm not, you could go through and paint each of these like reds or yellows or blues or whatever you wanted to do on the windowsills. I don't want to do that. I just wanted it to be wooden. Uh, same thing with the door. I could change it and paint it up and maybe go with a red or, or like a dark brown or something, but I didn't want to do that. I wanted it just to be wood. And then the green has been brought down with the with the wash so that looks really good now let me compare it to okay this is the original MDF color and so you can see the body of the of the uh, whole building has changed considerably and so this is going to look a lot better on the table like this now I'm considering I'm considering coloring the base along the edge here maybe applying just a little bit of flock around the edge but I'm probably not gonna do that I did also do it on the inside just to darken it up a little bit but like I said this is a, uh, a rank and file building I'm never gonna take the roof off unless I eventually someday down the road go with like a skirmish game but right now it's not a skirmish game it's rank and file so that's what we're gonna be doing just leaving it like that on the table leaving it like that got all dark you know and the, the the railings are nice and dark too yeah this is looking pretty good all right now if I want to later go back and touch it up or whatever I can but right now I'm gonna put it on the table just like that all right guys thanks for coming out and checking out this video and if you want to continue watching these videos where I do modeling and painting, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. And if you want to help out and support the channel, hit the PayPal me in the link description below. Uh, it would be really appreciated. And uh, it will help me get a lot of these supplies. And we'll catch you in the next one.